What's up there guys, this is Cobb and welcome to a really really quick video checking out the Destruction Warlock artifact weapon traits in WoW Legion. Actually recording this one without the face cam, uh, unlike some of the other Legion videos we've done, just because I'm about to rush out, I need to record this one really really quickly. And for that same reason we're also going to be bypassing Affliction Demonology, but right here we're going to be focusing specifically on the Destruction ones. Um, and I guess we're going to start off like here on the bottom left or something? Because it's a little bit all over the place, I'm not sure where else to start, so hey, we'll just start from the bottom and work our way up. So I mean, straight off the bat, Regard of the Sagarai, um, this one kind of, I guess this one kind of underlines why I've kind of held off a little bit on doing this one. I was hoping that we'd get a little bit more information on some of these traits, uh, because this one, we don't know what Doomfire is. Your spells have a 20% chance to trigger Doomfire. What Doomfire is... I have no idea, maybe it's just some kind of dot. It could be anything, really. Now, there's a chance that some of these traits have been explained a little bit more. For example, what Doomfire is in, like, a tweet or something by a Blizzard dev, uh, and I've just missed that or, or whatever. So if you have any more information than I do, which you probably will, uh, feel free to post it below in the comments, help me out, help everybody out, I'm sure. Well, we'd all appreciate it, you know? But anyway, that's the first one. Regard of the Sagarai, your spells have a 20% chance to trigger Doomfire. The price of power, your chaotic energies randomize three times and select the highest value. So what this is, it's actually going to influence our Destruction Warlock Mastery. So a chaotic energies is our mastery, um, and it takes a value between zero and however much mastery we've stacked and deals it as extra damage. So if we've built up 30%, you know, plus mastery or whatever. As Destruction Warlocks, we would then deal a bonus amount of damage anywhere between 30% and 0%, so it's pretty RNG. This talent, though, Price of Power, um, means that it's a lot more likely, it's more likely that we're essentially going to hit a high roll uh, on our Chaotic Energy's mastery, because it's going to randomize three times, um, and it's always going to select the highest value. So I actually really, really like this. Uh, I was very, very skeptical of the Destro Mastery in Legion, you know, just reading through it and kind of considering it a little bit, and it kind of seemed like, well, Haste is sort of the clear-cut winner of all of the stats, just because of the talents and the way that they seem to work now. But with this talent, we can at least consider picking up Mastery. I remember in a previous video talking about Chaotic Energies, and I remember being pretty sad about it, just thinking of the idea of lobbing out what could be a huge-ass Chaos Bolt, and then it gets like a 1% damage increase, even though you've stacked like... 50 or 60 percent mastery or something like that and and you just so happen to roll the lowest value and it just makes chaotic energies really really crappy in certain situations but this talent definitely helps with that uh, so we'll go ahead just, just do for point in there next up we have eternal struggle after casting life tap because we're all going to be casting life tap boys no matter what spec you are in legion you take a certain percent less damage for six seconds now this one is extremely hard to judge just because we don't know what the percentage is yet. It kind of feels like that minus M1% is just it's just a placeholder, isn't it, basically? So we'll just have to see what happens with this. Uh, I still have memories, you know, back in the day of using life tap and, and just having to use life tap when you're on, like, 20% health or, like, 30% health or something, just desperately trying to get a little bit of mana back so you can finish somebody off. So if this talent can help us any way at all, you know, surviving while doing such a dangerous thing, uh, then I suppose it'll be good. I guess we'll go up this way now. Master of Disaster. Increases the damage dealt by Incinerate by 10%. Little bit basic, sort of boring. I'm never, I'm never really a fan of talents like this. Like, why don't they just buff Incinerate damage by 30% and bypass this crap altogether, you know? So, kind of boring, but hey, I guess it's a damage increase, you know? Let's move straight along now to Soul Snatcher. Your case ball has a 10% chance to refund two soul shards. So three points in this, it goes up to 30%. No, it doesn't actually, I just lied to you guys. It's 10, then 15, and then 20% chance to refund two soul shards. Either way, even with three points in this, it feels like extremely sketchy RNG. One in five case balls will refund two soul shards. I mean, it's good. You see, a lot of, a lot of, these, a lot of these feel like I'm just sort of speculating and stuff, because unlike the talents, it's a lot harder to apply things like damage increases and, and, you know, damage mitigation by X amount and stuff like that. It's a lot harder to sort of apply these mentally to, to a situation or something. Which is, again, why I was sort of reluctant to do a video on these, but so many of you guys were asking for it and speculating about it that I thought, hell, might as well get on it too. Um, next up we've got Fire and the Flames. Increases the haste effect of backdraft by, again, a percentage. Now this shit is fucking crazy considering we're already going to be able to spec into improved backdraft. 
Um, I can't remember if that was in the PvP talents or the normal talents now, but this means that there are a bunch of talents already that are going to give us a huge amount of haste. Fire and Flames increasing the haste effect of Backdraft even more by something amount. We don't know the amount that's going to actually increase the haste effect just yet. But I mean, again, this shit's going to be crazy. We've already speculated in previous videos that we're going to be able to get off sub one second cast iron chaos bolts. Uh, and that's just with like the current PvP talents and the and the regular talents and stuff like that. So throwing fire in the flames into the mix as well, that shit's just gonna be fucking crazy. I don't know. Maybe we can even get Chaos Bolt down to like a 0 0.7 second cast or something ridiculous like that. I almost can't even imagine that happening, so we'll just have to see how good this is, I guess. Moving a little bit along, we have Fire from the Sky. Rain of Fire deals an additional 10% damage. Ooh. Game changing, boys, right? Not really, this one sort of sucks ass. It's like a worse version of Master of Disaster, but... Anyway, I mean, whatever. We'll just have to see what Rain of Fire does exactly in Legion, because this next one that's coming up... Rain of Fire could just be the crazy shit ever in Legion, uh, especially moving from the garbage that it is, you know, in Ward. Going from this to fucking this, your Reign of Fire now also reigns Infernals with Lord of Flames. I mean, this shit just seems too broken to be true. Surely it's not actually going to rain infernals. Like some people were theorizing, oh, what if the infernals rain down like one infernal every two seconds or something, and they all stun for two seconds or some shit? Like, what do you mean? That can't that can't actually happen, can it? Surely that's not even a possibility. What I think this is gonna be, I think it's being overhyped a little bit. I think it's probably just gonna change the animation. It'll probably change the animation, increase the damage, and maybe it'll spawn infernals that are active for like four or five seconds or something like that. There's no way that this is going to be as broken as people think that it's going to be. Like, honestly, if this spell actually spawns Infernals and the Infernals last anywhere longer than, like, 15 seconds, you know, before expiring or whatever, just imagine this shit in Rated Battlegrounds. Like, you'd just be chain-casting Rain of Fire and spawn, like, fucking 20 Infernals or something. For that reason, I'm not going to overhype this. I think that it's going to be good and... And it's going to be interesting to see what they do with it, but I, I don't think it's going to be like game-breaking OP or anything like that. Uh, so now we're going to move left, over here to Burning Hunger. Increases the chance for Immolate to generate a Soul Shard by 6%. So if you don't know how it works already, I think that it's like a 30% chance uh, whenever Immolate crits to generate as a Soul Shard. So this talent is sort of underwhelming because you need Immolate to crit, you know, for this to for this to even have a chance of proking. So I mean not only is it kind of weak, I mean actually when you look at it, you click it once, it gets you six percent additional chance to create a soul shard. Click it again, it only goes up to ten percent. It doesn't even double. Click it one more time, thirteen percent really? I don't know man. This one seems sort of weak. It seems like sort of an outlier. And I don't like it that much. I don't like the whole emulate crit to give a 30% chance to generate a soul shard anyway. I don't like the idea of that mechanic that much. Um, this one makes it a little bit stronger, but still, it's kind of meh. Moving up then to the middle talent right now, Tearing Time and Space. Now this is one that's got me really, really confused. If anybody has more information on this shit, uh, do let everybody know, including myself in the comments. Your spells can punch holes in the walls of time and space, opening beneficial portals. Now, that sounds nice and lovely, and, and, you know, interesting, um, but I have no fucking idea what beneficial portals means. Do I mean, is it like little orbs on the ground, like monk orbs, you know, and we've got to run through them, and they give us move speed, or they give us bonus damage, or is it like a mobility thing? Does it... I, I, I have no fucking idea. I would appreciate it so, so much if anybody had any information on this, and they could drop it down below in the comments, because I have no clue. Um, and I feel like most people have no clue and we're just playing guessing games at this point. Either way, I guess I hope it's awesome. Sounds interesting. Uh, let's just see where it goes. Next up we've got up here, Stuff of the Universe. Your spells can punch holes in the walls of time and space, opening beneficial portals. Alright, apparently we have a duplicate talent going on here. I guess one of them is a placeholder. And the other one is just like, the other one is the real deal. We actually have one unannounced trait, it seems. Unless both of these are actually intended to be here, and we just like, double the chance, or something, of punching a hole in the wall of time and space, or something like that, I, I don't fucking know. Anyway, next up we have Residual Flames. Increases the periodic damage of Immolate by 20%. That's one click. Oh, 20, 30, okay, 40% it goes up to. So, I mean... 
pretty good. Uh, the periodic damage of Immolate isn't usually a huge concern to me as a PvPer. Uh, as a PvEer, I guess that this is going to be good. Again, it's one of those boring ones again, like the Rain of Fire and the Incinerate one. Like, just like a flat percentage damage increase is always less interesting to me, but... Anyways, moving on. Um, Devourer of Life. Increases the damage and healing of drain life by up to 50%. Now, I guess this means that Destro is going to have drain life again. Next expansion. Now, I really hope that this isn't just going to be like a waste of a button for Destro Lux to press next expansion. Because I'm going to assume from this that we have it in Legion. In the past, it's typically been a very affliction-y spell. And it's not really done much for Destro. So, I hope that they can make it work in Legion. Uh, again, though, we'll just, we'll just see what happens. Overall, not a big fan of this talent, though, because, again, it's just a flat percentage increase to the effect of a spell. Um, next across, Planeswalker. Using your Demonic Gateway will fully heal you. Is this the talent that's finally going to make it, like, cool to use Demonic Gateways in duels? Because right now that feels a little bit cheesy, and you're sort of not allowed to do that. It's just one of the unwritten rules, you know. Don't use Infernals, don't use Doom Guards. Don't use fucking demonic gateways and jewels. Maybe this one will make it cool, because now we're benefiting from it, you know, from a talent or whatever. Gotta admit, this seems a little bit ridiculous, a little bit stupid. Um, but then again, is it a little bit stupid? I don't know. Am I jumping to conclusions? This just seems strange to me to have, you know, clicking a gateway and just... D clicking a gateway purely for healing purposes, like in an arena... Or, or a battleground or something like that. Having it fully heal you, whatever point of view you play from, you know, whatever part of the game you play the most. Shit's fucking crazy. Well, at least in some scenarios, we're gonna have to see if this goes live as it is. Uh, we'll see, I guess. Last talent on the on the actual tree. Uh, conflagration of Chaos. Your conflagrate always crits, and critical strike rating increases its crit damage. Really, really nice. I actually like this one a lot. I like this one so, so much. Um, that means that, you know, as Destro, we're gonna have Shadow Burn and a 100% crit chance can flag. And again, you know, one of the biggest problems right now in Wards of Draenor with Destro is that we just can't cast anything because it feels like nothing worth a damn is instant cast. We have like Rain of Fire and can flag which deals no damage because of Chad Remains. It seems like some of that is going to change in Legion. Uh, we're not getting Fell Flame back, apparently, which is, which is really, really sad. I mean, it's not been confirmed yet, but it doesn't look like it, does it? But little talents like this one are definitely going to help, though, with the whole mobility issues and stuff like that in PvP, so... So, yeah, I guess, we're really happy to see this one. Uh, and the last talent, which is, like, mysteriously outside of the regular tree, is Chaotic Instability. It increases the crit strike damage of Chaos Bolt by 10%. Now, this, may, this leads me to speculate a little bit. Increases the crit strike damage of Chaos Bolt. Does that mean that it's not always going to crit anymore? Because, I mean, since Mr. Pandaria, Chaos Bolt has had a 100% guaranteed critical strike chance. But this talent here, why would they specify increases the critical strike damage of Chaos Bolt? Why wouldn't they just say the damage of Chaos Bolt by 10%, you know? Unless Chaos Bolt isn't going to be a 100% crit anymore. I don't know, maybe I'm reading too much into the tooltip, this is all just speculation. But it will be very, very interesting if Chaos Bolt is no longer a 100% crit. Um, if it isn't, then I really, really like this talent. It adds, you know, it adds a kind of sage of RNG-ness to it all. You spec into this, when Chaos Bolt does crit, it just rips people in your asshole. If Chaos Bolt is still 100% crit though, then this tooltip is a little bit confusing. Um, and the talent is, again, just a kind of flat, dull, boring... 20% damage buff to the spell in general. So I guess we'll see how that pans out. Um, and yeah, that's going to wrap up this this really, really quick reading or review or whatever you want to call it of the Destruction Warlock Artifact Weapon Traits. And I guess that's going to about wrap up this video, actually. Um, I think overall, I like the look of these quite a lot. Uh, there's a few of them, a little bit dull, a little bit boring, but most of them actually seem really, really interesting. Again, some of them a little bit confused about tearing time and space, a little bit strange. Uh, Lord of Flames, you know, raining the Infernals. It's gonna be really, really interesting to see how that one actually comes to be within the game. I'd also really, really like to know what Doomfire is. But anyways, that's gonna wrap this up. I guess I apologize for the highly speculative kind of nature of this video. Um, a lot of these talents sort of feel a little bit unclear, uh, but that's... I guess that's the alpha phase for you. But I do want to thank all of you guys for watching. Hope that you all enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, it would be awesome if you'd stick around, subscribe, and um, leave a like on the video, all that good stuff. If you want to support the channel even more, feel free to check out the Patreon page. Link is always down below in the description. But apart from that, have an awesome day, everybody. Thanks for coming by again, and we're going to catch all of you guys just a tad bit later.